Um, hello, my wonderful constituents in Maryland's 8th District and our friends beyond who've come to join us. Uh, this week's roundtable focuses on uh, libraries and the role that they're playing through the COVID-19 epidemic crisis. And uh, we promised you three uh, extraordinary guests, and you've got them in uh, Rory Cox-Steve, who's the head of Children's Services with Frederick County Public Libraries. Thanks for waving, Rory. We've got Andrea Bursler, who's the executive direct director of the uh, Carroll County Public Libraries. Say hello, Andrea. Uh, and then we have Anita Vassallo, uh, who's the director of uh, Montgomery County Public Libraries. Anita, thank you for joining us. Thanks for waving. But look, we've got the most amazing <laughs> surprise guest of all, who I dragged you to the coming because no. uh, I, I was in a call with her, the Librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden, who has great Maryland roots. And uh, Dr. Hayden, um, why don't you tell everybody about your library background, because it'll sound boring if I say it, and you make it sound uh, as exciting as it is. Well, I was very fortunate to be mentored by one of the greatest state librarians in the history of library, public libraries, Nettie Taylor, who was the state librarian of Maryland, and Maryland earned the reputation of library heaven because what we all do in Maryland, and I'm still a Maryland, uh, is we work together and make sure our library resources are for everyone. So I jumped at the chance, sir, to be part of this and let everyone know that the National Library, Library of Congress, is a partner as well. Well, I, I've got to say, as a member of Congress, uh, I speak for my colleagues when I say, you've done such a remarkable job of making all of the resources of the Library of Congress available to us in terms of our daily work. And it's just extraordinary, the resources you have, but even more extraordinary, how you've mobilized them and galvanized them to make it a daily part of our existence and our work. And you are doing the same thing for our people too. So when I come back to you, I do want you to say a few words about what's available for the public and my constituents. Um, yes. But meantime, let, let's, Let's start uh, by talking to our, our friends here. Uh, Rory, why don't you kick it off? And what, what I want you guys to focus on is, um, you know, the, the, the old fashioned view of the library is just a place where there's a bunch of musty old books. And I remember when I was a kid, people didn't like to go to the library. Today, everybody loves to go to the library and it plays all of these different functions and roles for us. So tell us about that and specifically what it means to during the COVID crisis. Sure, I also agree. Everyone loves to come on down to the library. And while our physical buildings are still close to the public, we're offering curbside service. So people can place items on hold and come and pick them up. But people can also give us a call and say, hey, my son's obsessed with dinosaurs. Can I get some dinosaur books? Like we're still happy to help you do that browsing and we're here to still meet you where you are. You don't wanna call us, send us an email. You don't wanna send us an email? Post it on Facebook. We're going to get back to you. So we're definitely still here to interact with our customers. And our goal is always to make the library as accessible and interactive as possible. So we're offering digital story times every day of the week. We have big guests coming. Max Brailler is going to come and visit us. He wrote Last Kids on Earth. I'm super hyped about it. Um, we have... Uh, like ancestry programs going on, job seeking programs going on. Um, a magician is going to be with us. So we definitely are still meeting those programming needs online. Um, we also have our summer reading program that's still happening. That doesn't stop for any pandemic. So people can sign up on the website or learn about it through our Facebook page. Um, so we're still trying to be innovative and creative and accessible, even while the world is a little bit different right now. Well, Roy, thank you for what you're doing in, in Frederick. Anita, let me come to you about Montgomery County. How much of everything has migrated online? I mean, if people go to their local library in Silver Spring or Bethesda or Potomac, are they going to find things there? Is it going to be open or is it just now all on the computers? Uh, so, Congressman, we uh, are not actually open to the public right now. Libraries in Montgomery County closed to the public on March 16th. So it's been a long haul for us to get to where we are right now. We are doing, similar to what's going on in Frederick and Carroll, a lot of virtual programming. 
On March 16th, we had never done a program virtually. Now, by July, we're offering over 50 different types of program every single week. Wow. At all times, evenings, weekends, mornings, and they are highly attended. For some of our programs, we've had people um, coming in to us from as far away as Taiwan. Anywhere across the world now, Montgomery County Libraries have that reach. In terms of the resources, we um, shifted some of our funding to ramp up our uh, electronic resources. We picked up a streaming service called Hoopla, which they do have in Frederick County also. I'm not sure about Carol. And that's been extremely popular. On Monday, we kicked off our Holds to Go, which is our version of curbside, although we're not running out to the curb, so it's a contactless pickup. And uh, we're doing it by appointment. In Monday, the first day, we filled 526 appointments for picking up materials across the system. And then um, we're taking in all of the materials that everyone so very carefully took care of for us over the past four months. So thousands and thousands of items are returning to the libraries. We put them in a 72-hour uh, quarantine, and then we check them in and return them to the shelves. Huh. And Anita, do you agree with what Rory said that um, the the people who we would normally see at our local library are still available to us online so people can write in or call in and say, hey, I'm doing a research project on the Peloponnesian Wars or I want to find out more about viruses. Can you yeah, help? I, would, I would say for the most part, one of our challenges that we're facing right now is as you mentioned, the libraries are a place to be, and people come to the libraries for many, many different reasons. Some of them just to be able to use that space to for focus study, to use our public computers, uh, to search for a job, to connect with relatives overseas. So right now, of course, that aspect of library services is not available to the community, and that is something that we hope and hope to be able to offer as we move into our next phase when we're able to have some uh, controlled access into our buildings later on in the summer. That is something that really weighs very heavily on me because all of these wonderful online resources are not available to people who do not have the capacity to access them. Either they don't have wireless, they don't have a device. So I think you know the digital divide, um, which we've talked about for years, has really hit home during the pandemic as a serious issue to be um, somehow conquered by libraries and local governments. Great. All right. And Andrew, yeah. let me come to you and maybe you can pick up on that point about the digital mm -hmm. divide because uh, uh, lots of parts of Carroll County are uh, very remote from the best internet access. Tell me how you're dealing with that and what you've been doing in Carroll County to continue to make the libraries there a vital source of um, energy and support for people. Absolutely, um, and, and, and Anita is absolutely right. We've added an awful lot of online pieces uh, to our Carroll County platforms. We've added Canopy, we've added lynda.com, so people who are looking for jobs um, can go online and take that free training and, and become highly skilled or, or better skilled for, an, an, for new employment. We've added online magazines, New York Times is online. We've had over 800 individuals who have gotten new cards online since we, since we closed in June, uh, or in March, excuse me, March. So we know that there's a lot of people there that are um, utilizing the online platform. But in Carroll County, we not only have that digital divide that's driven by the economy where that people can't afford Wi-Fi or they can't afford the devices, we actually have areas in our, in our county that are still, um, still can't reach cell service. So even if we provide them with devices, they still can't get online. And we're painfully aware of this. Um, and we're, we're working with the school system. We're, we're trying to find ways to meet the needs of those individuals um, and make sure that they can access an awful lot of these online pieces. We've had over 460 online programs since we closed in March. Um, a lot of them have been extremely well attended. Many of them uh, contain original content, so we've been able to record them and make them all available whenever it's needed for people. So even if people can't get online, say in the morning, but they can in the afternoon, in the morning, they can go back online in the afternoon and watch those same programs. And that's been a wonderful boost.
used for us. So we've created our own cooking shows. We have trivia nights. We have concerts. Mm -hmm. We have talks. Huh. We have David Shannon and Angie Kim mm -hmm. and Laura Lippman do online book uh, author programs. And we continue um, in an effort to try and reach those people who are struggling economically. We've remained fine free since we closed. So everything from everything that was checked out since February actually um, has, is fine free and remains fine free until we get through this crisis. Uh, we oh, I love that. People to have that extra last one more thing that they had to deal with. Isn't that wonderful? Well, look, uh, Andrea and Rory and Nita, I thank you all for what you've been doing uh, to keep us culturally and intellectually engaged uh, and together as a community. And because we're online, even expanding our conception of community beyond our neighborhood, beyond our county, even you know, to other counties, the rest of the state, to the rest of the world. Uh, Dr. Hayden, as you listen to them talk about what they're doing, how does that resonate with your experience being the Librarian of Congress? One of the things, and to hear Rory be so excited about what the uh, library can offer in the summer and summer reading and that, and just being able to keep that excitement going and be that place and to hear uh, Andrea talk about no fines, uh, not having barriers, and then to have Anita really bring home the fact that during this time, most libraries, this is very hard because we would be open. And I've had that experience in Baltimore during the unrest. This is when people need us as the place the most. And it is challenging and the access points, we're doing all of this virtually, but we are the place in so many communities that people get online to take advantage of these things. So I'm just glad that we're, the Library of Congress is part of the community of service. And we have a special part now of that. We have a page on our website, loc.gov engage. And Rory's gonna love this as children's librarian. We have authors like Dave, the award-winning and most popular author, Dog Man and Captain Underpants. I just did an interview with Mo Willems, that's the pigeon who doesn't like to do it. We have uh, Jason Reynolds and Jacqueline Woodson doing Grab a Mic, and then all kinds of things for educators, office hours for educators, teachers with one of our education experts. So we encourage people to get online with the Library of Congress, and I want everyone to know that we are part of this community of libraries serving everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, all of you make me so proud, and as I listen to Dr. Hayden uh, reflect, it, it makes me realize that, the, that libraries really have evolved dramatically and are constantly adjusting to circumstances uh, and uh, continue to play such a vital and indispensable role for us through this crisis. So we thank you, and maybe if we just go around one more time, everybody just say uh, your website address so people mm -hmm. know how to connect with you. Dr. Hayden, would you repeat it one more time for the Library of Congress? It's loc.gov, engage. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Hayden, Rory. It's fcpl.org. Terrific, Anita. Well, of course mine is complicated. It's <laughs> Montgomery, <laughs> County MD dot gov G O V slash library. All right. And if that feels just go for Montgomery County Library someplace. Okay. And Andrea. Ours is library dot C A R R dot org. All right. Well look, I extend a big virtual hug to everybody. Thank you so much <laughs> for what you do and let's stay connected. Thank you, Dr. Carla Hayden, for surprising us. Amazing. Amazing. Oh no. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Congressman. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Stay safe.